it was refreshing to hear George Springer formally introduced as a Blue Jay talk about, among other things, the uh, honor of playing for not just a city, but an entire country. And what a fit for this ball club. Let's expand on that with Dan Schulman and Joe Siddle. First to you, Dan, what does Springer add to an improving ball club? Well, I think the short answer, Jamie, is everything. I, I mean, he brings so many things. Obviously, He's an all-star caliber player. He's an elite offensive player. He's a good center fielder, and he's a great right fielder, although I would expect to see him in center field almost exclusively for the Blue Jays unless something happens that we can't anticipate. And I also think, and I understand that a lot of people are going to look at him as one of the guys who was part of the cheating scandal with the Astros, and he was, but he was very contrite about that in the aftermath uh, at the beginning of this past season, unlike some of his teammates. And I will tell you from the limited dealings I've had with them and from the people I know who cover the team on an everyday basis, the Blue Jays are getting a great person. I really believe that. I think he's going to be very active in the community, and I think he's going to be a tremendous influence on some of the younger players in the Blue Jays clubhouse because he has won. He's not a make-it-about-himself kind of guy. He's a work-hard, do-the-job-and-help-your-team kind of guy. And whether he hits first, second, or third, whether he plays center or right, and again, I think it'll be center, I think he's going to make this team better in a number of different ways. And for me, it's the experience that George Springer is going to bring to this Blue Jays team, but most notably the lineup and presumably at the top of the lineup. Charlie Montoya was asked about that, and he is going to be able to pencil in all kinds of different lineups because he's going to have that flexibility. I see George at the top, and when you have a bat like that at the top of your lineup, that is the way you start things off. This team has talked about the center field position for a few years now, Randall Gerchick did okay there filling in and moving over this past season. But George Springer, I see a lot of time in center field, and he has really shored up the middle of that field. So you've added a good defender. You've added an excellent bat and one that I think will be leading this team off. Let's then discuss another bat and glove, though it's not been made official. The reports indicate that the Blue Jays have come to terms with Marcus Semien on a one-year deal. Dan, what does this do for this club? Well, two years ago, he almost won the MVP. He had a phenomenal season in 2019, obviously didn't have the same kind of year in 2020, but he started very slowly, was banged up, had an injury in his side, and got better and better as the short season came to a close and then into the playoffs. They're going to get a guy who it sounds like they plan on playing at second base. Obviously, if Bo Bichette ever needed a day off at short, Semyon can play there. And I wouldn't be shocked if he plays some third base, too. Whether the plan is him at second and Biggio at third, or does Vladdy get some time at third, or maybe Simeon plays a lot at third and Biggio still at second. It just adds to the versatility that they have. And, and you know what? A guy who got a one-year deal probably wants a multi-year deal. And he's very motivated to have a great season and to get a multi-year deal, whether it's in Toronto or somewhere else. And one thing I really like, Joe, about the one-year deal aspect of it Groshans and Martin aren't blocked. The flexibility for the organization is still intact going forward. Well, and you are adding a true shortstop. And any team that adds a true shortstop, normally those guys can play around a little bit too. So if he plays second base, that's a great thing. If Bijou is at third base, I don't see Kevin as an everyday third baseman, but I can see him spending some time at third base. Maybe it's a bit of a platoon with Vladdy. So Vladdy plays some third, some first, DH is some, maybe a third each. That would work. But I think with Simeon, you do have that flexibility. And certainly the biggest insurance policy here is if Bo is ever down for a length of time, you are adding a very capable shortstop at a very important position on the infield. Joe, back to you then. And Dan alluded to Groshans and Martin. Here are the Blue Jays acquiring two top-tier players without giving up any prospects whatsoever. That's got to be a bonus. This organization has talked about player development and depth a lot over the last number of years, and we're seeing it now. They are spending money, and that is thanks to ownership for opening up the checkbooks to get these players. It started last year with Ryu, and now Springer, and then Simeon. So they're spending the money to bring in talent and complement this core. Mark Shapiro has talked about that for the last number of years. When the time is right, we will spend. Well, the time is right now. George Springer has added. Simeon is going to complement this young core, albeit for a one year, maybe a filler. Maybe he signs an extension down the road. But when you continue to retain that depth throughout your system, that's not all the way through the minor leagues, but it's right on the cusp there, you are going to be able to 
sustain injuries. You're going to be able to sustain poor performance at times and fill guys in. The good teams have a lot of depth, and that's where the Blue Jays are headed. And I still think we, we shouldn't assume that uh, some of that depth won't be used in a trade in, in the next month or so. You know, San Diego picked up Joe Musgrove, traded prospects. The Yankees picked up Jamison Tyon, traded prospects. Uh, and if the Blue Jays can't sign somebody, I, I believe there's a starting pitcher coming, either through a signing or through trade. And if they can't sign somebody they like at a price that they're comfortable with, I still think there is the possibility of a trade. Like every organization, you want to make the trade without touching your top five, six, seven prospects. You want to use, you know, 15, 20, 25, that, like the Yankees did in their trade for tie-in. So I, I still think there could be a deal coming because I believe there's got to be one more starting pitcher brought into the team before the season starts. Joe, you would concur, I assume. Absolutely. And I think, Dan, the, the point is, too, is this team has gone to the checkbook first, spent the money, and Mark Shapiro said in the press conference, you know, a lot of the heavy lifting is done. Well, they did some heavy lifting when you add two guys like Springer and Simeon, but holding all of your prospects while you did that, now maybe that plan B or the next plan is exactly what Dan just alluded to. Maybe they land a pitcher, and I think we all would agree they need a good starting pitcher to solidify that rotation, and perhaps now that's when you go to the trade avenue. And I think they do. They do have the depth from within to whether it's Anthony Kay or Julian Merriweather or Thomas Hatch or TJ Zoik. We haven't talked about those names a lot in the offseason. We've been focused on who it looks like the, the five starters are going to be coming out of the season. But when you go from a 60 game season, presumably to 162, if they're able to get that in you're going to need a lot of arms. None of these guys are going to be able to go out and throw 200 innings, I don't believe, based on how short the season was last year. So some of that depth that may start the year at AAA, even though they pitched capably in relief in the big leagues last year, some of those guys may come up and become starters in the middle of the season. Well, opening day nears, uh, when that will be, we're not entirely sure based on the fact that we're stuck in this pandemic, but uh, when it does arrive, this is going to be one heck of a good ball club. Our thanks to Dan Shulman and Joe Siddle.